Save our water. Keep the money out. Really important night tonight. We're uh, going to have a chance to talk to FERC and tell them exactly what we think is going to happen with with the pipeline and, and all these meetings that have been leading up to this point. Everybody's here. It's growing. The campaign goes out the door. It's going to be a much bigger event. We're hoping maybe we'll show up in the Roanoke Civic Center in the near future. I am. The greatest sin that mankind can commit is a sin where they know that they are doing wrong, but they do it anyway. They do it knowingly. And that is what EQT is doing. Young lady, right over here to Charles. They know what they're doing, but they worship money. And so they're going to do it regardless. You say that citizens can make a difference by providing you with a specific comments or concerns about the project, and you suggest that for our convenience, the Commission has invited us to speak. Our community deserves the right to be heard. We need more time for people to come to, uh, to a public hearing with more notice than two weeks. I'm going to show them that the Great Eastern Continental Divide is on the edge of Craig's Creek, right there at Pandapas Pond at 460. Then it comes around Sinking Creek Mountain. Then it comes around Johns Creek Mountain. And then it comes around Salt Pond Mountain and it comes up to Potts Mountain. If the pipeline comes through the alternative route, it cuts the Great Eastern Continental Divide one, two, three, four, and probably five times. It's going to impact the water going to the Atlantic. It's going to impact the water going to the Gulf of Mexico. It means that a commission decision cannot be changed by the executive or legislative branches, but a FERC decision can be challenged in court. One of the industries we regulate is the interstate transportation of natural gas. We also regulate non-federal hydropower, electric rates, and oil rates, but neither the siting of electric power lines nor the siting of oil pipelines. So, for those of you who ask, no, FERC does not regulate Keystone. Um, we also don't regulate the exploration, production, or gathering of natural gas, or the local distribution of natural gas. Those activities are regulated by the states. They will intimidate landowners as they've already begun doing by sending certified letters. They'll sue people as they have in West Virginia. They will not compensate people fairly. And ultimately, they will have the backing of the federal government to use eminent domain for those who refuse them. They will take our land for their private company gain, and this is wrong. We pay taxes on this land. These entrepreneurs do not. This is the stuff for which the Revolutionary War was fought. Will the FERC follow the recommendation of the federal government's own experts? Or will the FERC assure us that mitigation and best management practices will protect Monroe, Craig, and Roanoke, just like they protected the Dan River? In my world, MVP is a joint venture of thugs and bandits. And FERC is aiding and abetting their crime spree. Unless and until it is proved that mitigation works, we're mitigating ourselves to death. And the lack of evidence that impacts to water, wildlife, and our quality of life can be mitigated is a significant issue that needs to be analyzed. And the legal scholar in me believes that before this is all over, the intersection of the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution and the federal power of eminent domain will also be a significant issue. I'm here to express my personal disappointment to FERC over their history of deafness to the citizens to whom they should be responsible while they pander to the private profits of the utility companies. I hope and expect you to do better in the future. If you are people of conscience who care about the safety of your fellow man and ultimately about the preservation of this planet, you must take no action on the Mountain Valley Pipeline. It is some of the most beautiful scenery in the country that we should preserve for all of the public, not destroy for the profits of a private company. All pain, no gain.
Some folks may not be aware of this, but the East Tennessee pipeline actually goes directly underneath the Spring Hollow Reservoir. And there it has operated safely for decades without any adverse impact, impacts to our water quality. It can be done, and it is being done in our region and across the country. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Today I'm speaking to the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission um, during their public comment period to ask them to think very carefully and critically about the decision to build the Mountain Valley Pipeline. I hope to see a scenario where the pipeline can coexist along with our natural environment. And I urge this board to vote yes on allowing the pipeline. Thank you for allowing me to speak. <laughs> I'm allowed to close this meeting. You are the rudest group of people I have ever heard. What? Here and there. All right? I think, I think you all get an apology. Because people, you don't agree with their views, does not mean that you have the right to intimidate. I didn't do it. You, are you closing this meeting now? Is that what you're I'm doing? about to, if I ever hear another reaction to a speech like that. I asked you all to show respect regardless of what people had to say. You all want to say something. Right. You need to allow your neighbors and other members of the community to speak as well. So I would like you to show either common courtesy or please leave the room. We expect the same in return. Okay, would you like to leave No. Okay, then please be quiet. As a recent graduate of environmental policy and planning from Virginia Tech, there is no reason beyond economic gain to the MVP company to build the state-long high-pressure pipeline. The intention of this pipeline is to sell natural gas to Europe. Long before the first natural gas flows through any pipeline, the major construction, excavation, and blasting of rock will disturb this delicate drainage and our water-dependent ecosystem. The environment does not need more of this gimme-gimme extraction mentality. Look where it's gotten us. Climate change is real, and we must stop the pipe lies. We all face various levels of risk every day. If anyone understands that, I do. I make a living helping organizations and, the, and their employees understand and manage risk. I do not believe, however, that a pipeline of this size running through this portion of Montgomery County carries an acceptable level of risk. I just learned that my home was on alternate route 87 in Montgomery County. CNN posted an article that Pacific Gas and Electric in California just recently settled a dispute um, uh, for a natural gas pipeline explosion which happened in 2010, the San Bruno explosion. So that natural gas pipeline explosion killed eight people, destroyed 37 homes, and 50 people were injured. And it also resulted in a 1.6 billion dollar settlement. Alternate Route 87 runs between my house and my neighbor's home. In fact, if the pipeline were to go in on that alternate route, the route would literally be 50 feet from my front door. FERC scopes out our land in order to provide an environmental impact statement. I hope they make sure that their definition of the environment includes us. It includes the people who stand to inherit this earth, and our rights and our lives are at stake. We deserve the right to say no. And I don't know what the American dream is, but this is an American nightmare. I support the construction of this pipeline and any other mining or drilling or transportation that it takes in order for us to become energy independent. I feel very strongly about that, and uh, all of these other people that are talking tonight are just uh, selfish, not in my backyard. They're not thinking of the thousands of lives that were lost overseas. I did want to tell you that whoever designed this path is either a damn fool or a sadist.